Hey, so I have a couple of friends who wanted me to teach them a little something about trick mixing. I thought I'd make a video for them, and I guess you can watch it too. Yes, he has friends. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Scratch Snobs. I'm Yukiko Love, this is Mike C, and in this episode we talk about trick mixing. As Mike mentioned, uh, he and I have a few friends who talked and asked and requested to do um, a lesson or to teach them some basics about trick mixing. And when I think of trick mixing, the thing that comes automatically to mind is the beat junkies. How about you, Mike? Yeah, I mean, the king of this trick mixing stuff in my mind is J-Rock and also Melody. Um, kind of a little tangent at ScratchCon 2000. Were you there? Did you go? No. Okay. Well, You were there? Yeah. Oh, wow. So there was all this stuff. Like there were all these beat jugglers and there were all these scratchers, right? Which, you know, everyone was dope. But actually, not just my opinion, but other people I had talked to, I think the best part of ScratchCon was J-Rock's trick mixing Quiet Storm. Like, mm. it was that good. Mm. I think because a lot of those beat juggle routines from other people, we had seen them before. Um, and, you know, the cutting was dope too, but, man, J-Rock just, it was so on point. It was like, to me, it was the best part of that. And um, one of the most important reasons why we're covering this topic is uh, in our past um, videos, we talk about trick mixing, but we never really got um, into depth. And uh, we just wanted to... F uh, educate you all. This is like a precursor to juggling these elements. And so we just wanted to highlight and, and break down to detail what trick mixing elements are actually are. are. Sound good? Yeah. All right. So we got uh, a presentation from uh, Mike C here. He's going to go ahead and do a um, little bit of trick mixing and, and verbally break down what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, uh, kind of a, what do you call it? a disclaimer to all this. I'm not like fucking J-Rock or anything. I'm not trick mixing master who knows everything, but you He's know, Mike C. But you know, I mean like I'm putting this, the original intent of this video was to, you know, just give kind of an introduction uh, to trick mixing for my friends Scott and Bobby. So uh, Scott and Bobby, this is for you and anyone else who wants to watch it, enjoy. So with regard to trick mixing as a whole, there's like three kind of topics that I'm going to cover and I feel like if you take these three techniques or these topics, if you learn all three of them and then ideally if you could kind of go back and forth between the three of them, you'll, you'll be a dope ass trick mixer. So, okay. So the first topic is the simplest one. Um, it's, it's just looping. It's just taking, first of all, I'm using two doubles of the same beat. I'm using uh, electric relaxation by Tribe. Looping is just like the simplest form of juggling, just taking two copies of the same record, using the same part of that record, and just, you know, going back and forth between them on beat. Yeah, I, I think this part you can kind of figure out for yourself, especially the, the very simplest uh, aspects of it, but if not, then I'll help you when I see you in person. So, uh, yeah, here's that tribe beat. Uh, uh. Yeah, so you know, I'm just I'm just taking two copies of the same record, the same part of the record, and just uh, just looping them. Um, you can you know you can also use different parts of the song. Oops. So right there, I'm using, um, in each instance, I was using the same section with the same section. Uh, if you want to get all funny with it, you can use, you know, two different parts of the same beat. But anyway, you get what I'm doing. I'm just, uh, you know, just going back and forth, keeping them on beat. 
Um, one thing I'll say about trick mixing is that it's a lot easier on Serato because, you know, like I just fucked up right there. Uh, when I fuck up, all I have to do is hit a cue point and I'm back where I want to be. Like back in the day, you're using vinyl. In trick mixing, like the record keeps going. Like you're not just practicing on the same part of the record. It keeps spinning forward throughout the song. So if it skips or you fuck up, you could be really be fucked, <laughs> you know, like if you lose your place. Anyway, uh, grateful for Serato. So that was looping. The second topic that, uh, that I mentioned, you know, these are just terms that I called them. I don't know if I made them up or picked them up somewhere, but um, fills. Basically it involves just letting one copy just play. Oops. And then, uh, so this one, I'm not even gonna touch it, right? On this one, I'm gonna take it and just fill in I'm basically just scratching, right? Because I'm only filling in, or I'm only, uh, I'm letting one beat play and I'm just adding shit with the other side. So in this case, I'll start, well, let me break that down. So I, I can add the beginning kick. It's all sloppy. Whoops, the beginning kick. I'm not used to your slip mats. All right, um, or I can use the hi-hat. The butter rugs, the same ones you use. Yeah, I don't know. Mine are different somehow. Or I can use the snare. Or in some cases, I'll use two parts. Like, okay, the very beginning of the beat is a kick, hi-hat, snare. Kick, hi-hat, snare. So in some cases, I'll, I'll just be filling in with uh, one noise, one of those three things. So I'm using the kick, right? Now it might look and sound fancy, but really I'm just scratching. I'm doing forward scratches. So I'm using the hi hat. Okay. So in each of those, were you gonna say something? Like yeah, Mike. Can you do that a cappella so they could just see the scratch? Like you're not, you know, to show them how simple the scratch is. Oh yeah. On the I mean, right like, side. boom, boom, tap. Boom. Well, it's, you know, here's another thing. The patterns that sound good when you're trick mixing will depend in large part on the beat you use mm. because, <laughs> yeah, just different yeah. beats are structured differently. They have their kicks and hi-hats at different places. So, you know, I'll, I'll say certain patterns you do on one beat might not sound really impressive on another beat. So, you know, uh, to some extent, I guess you can tailor it depending on the beat you're using. But I think most people, you know, when they're trick mixing, they're, they're kind of just fucking around. So and just in regards to like a BPM. So, you know, like it usually goes a lot better with a boom bap. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I'd want to pigeonhole it like that. I mean, I, I'm not, that, I feel like trick mixing is kind of a weak spot of mine. So I, I'm, I do it only with beats I'm really comfortable with. And for me, that's, I don't know, 90 BPM, like a premier beat. Oh, here's another thing about trick mixing. Um, you know, and you know, when I say these rules, rules are made to be broken, but things I've found is that, you know, I said Premier Beat because his stuff is real boom bap and it's really, you know, the kicks and the hi-hats and the snares are very distinct. Whereas in some other beats, like maybe there's a horn, like I, I might like, I'm sure you can trick, mi trick mix, they reminisce over you, but you know, with that horn laying over it, I don't know, it'll either make it that much doper or that much difficult. So, I don't know, that's just kind of another note. But um, but you were talking about BPM and the Yeah, kind of like it doesn't, you know, like like with trap music, I don't feel like it sounds as as well or as far as EDM using stuff like that. It doesn't See, I know I know what you're saying and why you're saying that, but I feel like we'll say that and then someone will do some sick ass trick mix trick mixing thing with a trap beat and we'll be like a looking Ooh. stupid <laughs> you know Ooh, right right i mean right. so you know these rules are made to be broken but um to your point it is when you're starting off practice around these bpms and like boom bap i think it just yeah, yeah or it's more natural yeah something that is comfortable and you know whatever is easiest for you and then when you're fucking j-rock level you can go ahead and uh break all the rules yeah juggle whatever fucking crazy kind of beat you want Oh yeah, okay, we were talking about fills. So yeah, basically one side is just playing, you're basically just scratching. And all I was doing just there was playing either the kick 
at certain times or the hi-hat or the snare. And really that's, you know, it sounds all crazy, but th really that's literally all I was doing. And again, which patterns you use and which patterns sound good, it depends on the beat and the way that the beat is structured originally. So that's kind of the simplest form of fills. Um, I was just using one of those three noises, but in another kind of a, a more advanced version of fills, I might use two. Like, you know, like I said, it starts with kick, hi-hat, snare. <laughs> By the way, for me, I like to put my first kick at 12 o'clock. I mean, you don't have to do this, but just so you know what's going on here in my demonstration, the kick is at 12, the hi-hat is, I don't know, like 2 o'clock or something. Yeah, the needle, basically. And then the snare is like uh, the stop button. So kick, hi-hat, snare. Okay, so in that first example a second ago, I was just using one of the three noises, either the kick or the hi-hat or the snare. But um, in a kind of more advanced version of the fill, you can use two or more of those noises in a row. Like you can go boom, boom, tap, or, you know, okay, it's, it's not gonna sound good when I say it, but wh what I'm gonna do now is use, instead of just using one of the three, I'm gonna use two of them. I'm gonna use the kick and the hi-hat. That was sloppy. Kick and the hi-hat, or the hi-hat and the snare. Or if I feel really crazy, maybe after that I'll do the snare and whatever comes after it. I guess another. That, might, that may or may not sound good. Um, I've never trick mixed with this beat before. But um, anyway, I'm gonna do fills again, but this time I'm gonna use two sounds instead of one as I did in the first example. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the hi-hat. Yeah. So, um, yeah, basically I was just doing kick hi-hat, whoops, sloppy, okay, kick hi-hat or hi-hat snare. Um, and, you know, I never did try hi-hat and whatever comes after it. Let's just see if that sounds good. No, that sounds good. It seems like there's another kick right after the hi-hat. So I was going snare kick. Snare kick, snare kick, okay? So uh, yeah, that was fills. We started with loops, that was fills. Any thoughts? No, that's good. Yeah, okay. Um, so the third part- Number three. Is kind of, I think this is the part that most people associate with trick mixing. Um, in reality, mm. the way I see it, it Trick mixing is a combination of the three things, um, loops, fills, and this third part, which I'll generally call chasing. Um, I think, yeah, I think when most people think of trick mixing, they're thinking of chasing, but I feel like if you watch the really dope trick mixers, they're kind of doing all three. They're kind of going back and forth between those three topics. All right, this is where it gets mathematical, okay? So, um, Good thing we're Asian. <laughs> Bobby's not. Sorry, Bobby. I'll, I'll help you out when I, when I come over the house. So, um, you know, in music, we go by bars, right? A bar is, or a measure is four counts. So in this case, uh, one, two, three, four. Um, or with, you know, the other version of the, or the other section of the tribe beat, one, two, three, four. So that's a bar, yeah? I don't think you'll go too much longer than a bar, but just to, you know, just to be complete in the explanation, here's two bars. One, two, three, one bar. One, two, three, two bars. But anyway, you get the point. You, you know what a bar is. A bar is four counts, okay? So what I'm gonna do, you know, we have the same exact two beats here. We have them at the same exact place on the beat or within the song. I'm gonna play this one, one bar, after this one. Um, okay, so one, two, three, one bar. Okay, 
so so I set this one exactly one bar after this one, okay? Four. One, two, three, 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 four. Okay, so um, so that's what happens when I put it one bar after it. The way I kind of think of it is one of these will be kind of the main beat, and the other side will be like the echo or the secondary ver I, I don't think anyone else thinks of it this way, but like to me, this is the main beat, and as long as this one kind of keeps going, it keeps the rhythm, it keeps the whole thing on track. So in that case, I set this one one full bar behind that one. Now I'm going to do it only half a bar behind that one. Uh, so half a bar is two counts. One, two, that's half a bar. I'm going to set this one half a bar behind this side, and each time that half bar goes by, that two counts, I'm going to move the faders. This one will be half a bar behind this one. That is two counts behind it, okay? <laughs> or I can just let it go. Oh, oh god damn. <laughs> Feedback. Relax yourself, help yourself. Relax yourself, girl. Relax yourself, girl. Relax yourself. You know, you can just let it go, and then, you know, uh, you'll always know that what comes out of here is half the bar, two counts behind whatever it is. And then, you know, like I said, I kind of think of this one as the main beat. So as long as I kind of keep track of this one, it'll keep the whole thing on track. One. I think this one's starting to get a little behind, so I'll like speed it up a little. So I think you get the point. Um, you know, this one was two counts or half a bar behind. This one was two counts or half a bar behind that one. Okay, so let's uh, let's shorten it even more. Let's make it a. I guess it'd be a quarter bar. So one, one count behind. What do you think? Am I explaining this shit all right so far? Yes. All right. Okay. So I'm, this, this one's going to be the main beat again, and this one's going to be one count behind it. You can let it go. So, I mean, that's, again, I'm not fucking melody, but I think he does shit like he'll be only, I mean, he'll, he'll just do all kinds of shit, man. Like, he'll fucking loop it for a while, right? And then he'll set one of them, maybe he'll do some fills, right? And then he'll set this one half a bar behind, but then all of a sudden he'll fuck with one of them so, and make it so it's only a tiny bit less than that. Like, he'll just do all kinds of shit. But when you break it down... He's doing one of three things. He's looping, or he's doing fills, or he's doing chases. I, don't, I, I think I'm using the right term, but when I say chases, I mean that one copy of the record is a certain amount of time behind the other copy of the record, and you're going back and forth between them. So yeah, man, loops, fills, chases, you learn that shit and learn to go back and forth between the three of them. Next thing you know, you're fucking J-Rock. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, any, anything to add before um, I get out of the way? 
Uh, no, I thought that was a really good explanation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share with you guys a little drill that kind of ties in everything that Professor Mike C was talking about. All right. Akiko's turn. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, what is it you're going to take us through here? So this is a drill I wanted to share with you guys. I'm going to use instrumental off the books from the Beat Nuts. Um, I'm not going to do any fills. What I'm going to do is go from looping um, and... Start from two bars to one bar to half a bar and to start chasing one note, half note, when synchronized, synchronized three quarter note, and that'll be the end of the drill. So I'll throw you, I'll, I'll sh I'm going to just show you kind of a progression of kind of those skill sets. So you're, you're going to go back and forth between different timings of how far one copy is behind the other one. Yes. Yeah, and you know, I, I know a lot of DJs get nervous when they hear about bars and measures and notes and shit, but I think instinctively you'll follow, you'll get the basic point that one copy will be behind the other copy and how much behind will vary. Right. Okay. You better watch your step. One, two, three, four, five, you six, better seven, watch your eight, step. two, three, four, Five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, one, two. You, you, I'll watch you, I'll watch you. Okay, so I followed most of that. Uh, Akiko was looping, d starting with two bars, and then shortened the loop to one bar, and then shortened it and shortened it until eventually you started chasing it with this copy being only one count behind this copy. And from there, I kind of got lost because you did a bunch of fancy shit that I don't even know how to oh, do. Oh, <laughs> okay, so I, I, I was trying to simply like, so one note behind yes. to chasing to half note. Half note. Well, I, I, I call it a half note. Or, um, um, so it's Okay, so you, snare, shortened, snare. you shortened it even more. It shortened it even more where when you hear either a kick or a snare, you want to immediately move the fader over, if that makes sense. So it's like snare, It makes snare. sense, but it's not very exact. <laughs> but basically, you shortened the lag time between the two copies to be really short. And then at some point you pulled that one back on a snare so that it was actually right on time with this one, right? right? And that's when you get that kind of yeah. double effect. Mm -hmm. And then I forget what you did after and that. And you just kind of tap it to get that triple effect. That echo. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too good at all that <laughs> shit, but at least I kind of understand it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, if you, uh, shit, if you want to learn some next, next, next level trick mixing, go fucking take a class with J Rock or Mello at, at the Junkies Institute. But, you know, this is for the homies. Uh, we just wanted to give you an intro. And, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Trick mixing. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else to say? No, we obviously need more practice. <laughs> <laughs>